And these must have been charged with meaning too. Small figurines embodying the primal life events of birth and procreation. Gravid earth mothers, weighty with fertility, enormous distended breasts and buttocks. So powerfully elemental, they seemed to speak directly to modern artists when they first saw them. The most self-consciously modern of them all, Picasso, told a friend that no sculptor had ever bettered the Paleolithic carvers. He bought a copy of this one, the Venus of Lesbuc, and kept it in his studio all his life. Was he touched by its archaic spirituality? No. He was earthly and worldly, but he felt a deep communion with the makers of a physical art. And there were traces of that communion elsewhere in his work. Despite rumors, there's no direct evidence that Picasso ever visited the painted caves of Altamira or saw in person the extraordinary painted bison that those caves contained. But he was obsessed with animals. One animal in particular, not the bison, but its cousin, the bull, an animal to which he returned again and again. Do we think this is mere coincidence? He liked to call himself a modern primitive. And in those images, glimmering images in the caves, he found, he thought, the fountainhead of everything that was truly creative about the artistic instinct. So he paid cave out the ultimate compliment by doing something very similar. He looked at a bull and then he produced this beautiful, dashing, impulsive picture of a bull. So close to the original, the Altamira, it could even have been a studious copy. But then he produced another ten prints, bulls drawn from his own enormous range of styles, from meaty naturalism through classical cubism to a lightly delineated bull that's really just a pair of horns. And then that other thing that bulls always need. The entire sequence expresses his admiration for the genius of the cave painters. His belief that ancient or modern, the hand of the painter, the hand of the artist, never really changes. And I have to say, I agree with Picasso. <laughs>